Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. We are continuing in our uh, video series on micro content in Madcap Flare, and we're focusing in this video on field level help because up until now, we've really been focusing on search output and topic output, but there are other uses for micro content. One of those is field level context sensitive help. So if you are, if context sensitive help is pretty new to you, you're not exactly sure, I would encourage you to go watch the other video I did on context sensitive help and it'll it'll explain all the basics and mechanics of that. And just make sure you've also watched the video earlier in this series on methods for creating uh, micro content because field level help is is joining these two things together. We're going to be using both the micro content and the context sensitive help. So first of all, we have to answer the question, well, what is field, uh, what is field level help? One way that we can uh, explain that is by looking at the Flare interface. If I go into the project organizer in this little project that I've got and open up a target, an HTML5 target, there are lots of fields in here. And if I go to uh, a tab like advanced where there are lots and lots of fields, you're gonna see this little icon next to some of them. Now, th there, are, there are tons of fields in the target editor and especially in this particular tab, a lot of them are self-explanatory there. It's not hard to figure out what they do, but some of them, it feels like, okay, they need a little bit more explanation. And so you provide help at this level, at the field level, that's different than topic levels. So I'm in the target editor. And if I were to just press F1, that's going to open up the topic on that entire thing. Okay. But we don't want to see the entire topic. And, and also, if you open up a dialogue and you see a little question mark thing in the upper right corner, you click that, that's that's topic level help. We're just focused on this one little thing. And so you click one of these and you get an explanation of that. So just a little bit more information. Uh, let me see. Sometimes I will do something like this where I'll have an explanation. And then I also have a clickable icon in here, which opens up more of the um, of the help because there's sometimes you know more that needs to be explained or there might be examples in there. Just uh, the a particular field just requires more attention. So that's field of help. Now these things that I'm showing you, you could do this with with micro content. You could create micro content, little little bits, and then you could tie it into these uh, working with your developer. So that when someone gets to a field, they could click something or hover over something and it could, it could just show your uh, micro content. Now, am I using uh, micro content for these things that you're looking at in the interface? Not yet. I want to, not yet. It's one of those things that's on a long, long to-do list that we have. Uh, so that is the goal. And once we implement that, uh, you shouldn't notice you know, too much of a difference here. It's just that what you're looking at here is the old fashioned way that we've always done our field level help. And that is I'll write some content and just give it to the uh, developer and they plug it in on their side rather than it being automated, you, pulling in the micro content. That's what we want to do. But this explains what field level help is. And so I am going to take you through and show you how it can be possible to use a micro content to do this sort of thing. In this little project, let's come over to our content explorer and go into the resources. And I have already a micro content file in here, but this micro content file in this example is set up for you know, some of the uses that we've been looking at in previous videos, providing micro content in search results, say. It isn't really set up. The intention isn't field level help. So I would encourage you to have multiple micro content files if you've got multiple uses, just keep things organized like that. And so it probably would be a good idea to create a separate micro content file. You don't have to, but that's what I'm gonna do in this, uh, in this exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and select new micro content. And I can give this a different name such as, oops, 
field level help. So we know what our main purpose of this thing is. Click add and it adds this file and opens up the editor. And we have this initial piece of micro content, which we can get rid of. Uh, we can replace it just uh, with something else, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And we're going to start out with an empty slate here, and we're going to populate this uh, at least with one thing. And in the, in the real world, you probably have lots of rows in here uh, with phrases that go along with these little pieces of micro content that are intended for these fields. So I'm going to go into one of the topics that I've got in this project called my wizard. And in here, I've got this table. And a lot of times, uh, field level help can come from something like this, where you're, you have a, a UI topic and you're explaining fields and you're doing it, doing it in a table. It doesn't have to be like this. It could be in set of steps. It could just be a regular paragraph in here. But here I've got first field, second field, third field, fourth field, fifth field, and just some, you know, kind of dummy text in here. And I want to concentrate on this third field and think, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm explaining this. And this particular field just needs a little bit more explanation. So I want to create a piece of micro content for this and then work with my developer in the UI to connect this with that field so people can click something and this information will come up. As we do this, we want to look at the structure, the structure bars of this table, all right, because there's a lot of tags going on here. We've got our main tag and all these others, these TR tags, which stand for rows. And if I click in one of these, you can see it changes a little bit. So I have a paragraph tag in here, and I just find it easier to create my micro content off of a paragraph tag. And if you initially create a table and it doesn't have that, if it has TR and then TD, you can just press enter and you'll get a paragraph tag in there. So I want to create a piece of micro content on this. The other thing about this piece of content in here is this particular one has this little icon in here which is sort of what I showed you before. If there's even more that needs to be done, I will include uh, a little image in there. And then you can hyperlink that image to the full topic or a different whatever uh, to get more information about this field. So I'm going to right click on this and tell it create micro content just on that paragraph phrase. I'm going to call it third field, even though in the real world, this field, it would have a different label. It's not going to be called third field, but uh, that's what I would do. Whatever the label is, that's probably what I would call that phrase. And then I'm going to select my field level help micro content file, click OK, and it adds it in there. And I'm going to do a save all. All right. So then I just go through and I add more and more and more micro content as time goes by. Now we want to go to our context sensitive help files. So this is in the project organizer and you come up to advanced and I have already added an alias file and a header file. These are the two files that kind of work with each other. They partner up and you're usually going to be working in the alias file to put it together and then it just writes it to the header file. So I'm in here. And you can see I've already got some pieces of uh, context sensitive help. I've got some IDs in here that I've created for these uh, main uh, topics, these my dialogue, my window pane, my wizard. And so these are topic level uh, pieces of context sensitive help. And over on the left side, it sort of replicates. This is a mirror of what's going on in your content explorer. So you're going to be selecting things that you want to create micro content for, whether it's a whole topic or a little piece of micro content, and you're going to add it in here. After I have have established a bunch of um, context sensitive help IDs like you see in here, what I'll normally do is I'll go to something that I want to create a, a new ID for. In this case, it's micro content. So. In, Otherwise, if it's topic level, I'd go to a topic and, and do this. But I'm I'm navigating down to my micro content 
to this field level help. And I'm even going beyond that to that third field piece of micro content. Normally what I would do is I'll right click and I'll say assign to new identifier and then it adds it in there. And uh, but what you can do if you're just getting started and you have a whole bunch of pieces, you can speed this up. You can automate it by generating a whole bunch at the same time. Now, you can also, in the, the video I, I do on context sensitive health, help explains this, you can go into this identifier options and set things up. Uh, if you want certain pieces in place for these identifiers as you create them, either one at a time or a whole bunch in bulk, you can select these things. I like to select uh, include file or phrase name in the identifier because that just makes sense. Uh, if I give this to the developer and they, go, and they go, well, I don't know what this thing is for. You don't want something that's mysterious. If, it's, if it is using the words third field, uh, then he knows you know, what, what it goes to. The value, number, numerical value doesn't matter where you start at, as long as each one of these has a different number associated with it. And there are other options in here that you can select. I'm not going to go through those again. Those That's in that other video. But if you want to generate a bunch at the same time, you can click this button up here at the top. And then it brings you this dialogue. And this is going to tie in those identifier options that I just showed you. It populates this and you're going, okay, I'm going to generate a bunch of these things. What do I want to do? And so let's let's assume that I've just created a whole bunch of micro content intended for field level help. And I want to go through one at a time to do it by right clicking. I just go down and I go, all right, these things I want. The skins, you're not going to select the skin because that's not supported for field level help. Generate identifiers for what do I want to do? Well, you have choices in here. You can do unassigned topics only. So I've only created, in this example, context-sensitive help for only three topics. So in this case, it'll create it for all of them because, because they're the ones that aren't assigned. It's just going to add a whole bunch more. Or I could say unassigned micro-content or unassigned both topics and micro-content. And then I could say all topics are all you know micro content, all this stuff. I'm going to select uh, select unassigned micro content. So in this case, I only have the one, but if I had 75, it would create 75 of these things. All right, and you just complete these other fields again. That other video explains them. Click create, and there is now. I actually do have another piece of micro content. This is the placeholder one in this other quick steps. Uh, micro content file that I didn't, I just put in there as an explanation. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this one. Oops. Right there. Okay. So I didn't intend to do that, but I've got this third field and it adds an underscore underneath it. And you can see the file that it's pointing to field level help. That's my micro content file, whereas these are topic files. And then you get this pound sign and third field. That means that it's going to that phrase. And then you got the path and there's my value on it. And so what you give to your developer once you're done with this, well, it depends on how what they want to use to hook it up. We usually use this identifier right here. So I would just give my um, I give my developer this. This is the ID. A developer could also hook it up according to the value, but they could just ignore that and not use the value and just use this thing. So that is what you do as the author. You're just doing that. And then you have to get this stuff to your developer. Actually, you have, there's a couple of different ways to work with context-sensitive help. You might work in a company where the developer provides the ID. The, the developer says, hey, use this. And then you, you just come in here and you plug it in. Or uh, what, we, what we do in our company is I create the identifiers and then I give it to the developer. And so in our case, I just give them this thing right here and uh, you know, tell them where it is, or they can look at the, the header file. You can provide them with the header file. Um, but usually the field level is, they, they, know where, they know where this is. So 
what happens next? Well, I would provide the developers with some information in the online help that tells them how they can hook this up on their end. Let's look at that. So you go into the online help and what you can do is just search for CSH calls like this. And this stuff is going to come up in here. This is that video I was talking about. And over on the right, information for developers. And so with context sensitive help, there's different information depending on whether you're creating HTML5 or web help, web help plus or HTML help. For this, we're just talking about HTML5 help. These uh, others don't support the micro content. And so you would just click on this and this is what you give to your developer. There are two methods they can use. They can use JavaScript or they can use a URL. All right. And actually, authors can do this, too. If you wanted to provide your end users with a link that is always going to be good, it's not going to break and you can always point to certain things. You can you can do this, too. But this is what a developer will do. They'll follow these instructions to tie it in on their end. Now, what exactly does a developer do on their end with those instructions? How do they hook this all up? I have no earthly idea. I that's not my job. I don't do that. Um, the developers, there's they're smart people. They have their their different software, their different tools for how they're working on on the software. So as the author, your job is really to connect this stuff in Flare and provide them with those instruction instructions just as. I showed you, and then they make it happen, okay? Um, that's really what it is. And so uh, you can use your micro content as you create it. You just have good communication with your developers and decide what you wanna do, how you want this stuff to look like, how you, know, how you want it to function. Is it gonna be a click? What is it gonna be? You give them your stuff and you should be able to do this. All right. That is going to do it for this video. And uh, we're just going to keep going in this video series. So I'll see you in the next one.